Thank you, Giorgio. I, I realize I'm the last man speaker standing between you and lunch, so I'll keep it short. And you have to remember one thing. There are really exciting developments in the treatment of small cell lung cancer ongoing in clinical trials, early clinical trials, and definitely it will come back at the agenda next year or year thereafter when we have results of the trial. That's all, okay? In more detail, these are my disclosures. This is my agenda. Uh, I will have one word about novel cytotoxics, some on novel combination, more on novel targets and novel targeted agents. And I think nowadays in lung cancer, you cannot have a, uh, you cannot have a talk without talking about immunotherapy. So, novel cytotoxics, one word, none. Okay, so there are no novel cytotoxic agents being developed at this point in time in early clinical trials. In the lab there are, but in early clinical trials there are no novel cytotoxics. We did, however, see a clinical trial, results of a clinical trial with a novel combination. Sorry, with a novel combination combination chemotherapy in second line. So this was a uh, Japanese study uh, reported in the Lancet Oncology uh, last year in relapsed small cell lung cancer, platinum pre-treated, so-called sensitive relapses. Those are patients that have a uh, relapse more than 90 days off first-line uh, treatment, reasonable ECOG performance score, normal organ reserve, and me measurable disease. And these patients were randomized between the standard of treatment. You remember the Stoputecan. Um, this is the Far Eastern uh, dose of uh, Topotecan, somewhat lower as in, uh, as in Europe. One, point, <coughs> one milligram per square meter uh, over five days every three weeks. And the experimental arm was uh, quite a heavy treatment considering that these were patients pre-treated already with uh, platinum, it's cisplatin, 25 milligrams square meter over two days. Etoposide, 60 milligrams per square meter, day one to three, and a typically Japanese drug that failed in the West, iron and 90 milligrams per square meter on day eight. And given the fact that this is quite a uh, myelosuppressive regimen, uh, GCSF support was provided, and these were uh, administered every three weeks. So this was a study outline. The primary endpoint of the study was OS and the stats assumed a median survival in the control arm for topotecan of eight months and they saw, uh, uh, went for a difference of four months so they sought for a uh, 12 months OS in the experimental arm and therefore they would need uh, 174 patients. In fact they enrolled 180, 19, 19 in each arm. You can see here the uh, consort. So this was the result, which was, I think, quite remarkable. First of all, in the topotecan arm, the median overall survival was as good as they would expect for the experimental arm, over one year. Remember, in the uh, registration study of uh, topotecan, when it was compared to uh, cyclophosphamide, adriamycin, and fincristine, the median overall survival was in the order of six months. So this is double what you would expect. However, in the experimental arm, the median overall survival was 18.2 months. You can see the forest plot that virtually everybody is uh, having uh, <coughs> profit from this uh, experimental treatment. And I think this is a relevant study because it's the first study to report a significant improvement over topotecan in second line we have to uh, acknowledge that this is a very selective population. For instance, the median age was 64 years. It was good performance status patients only, zero and one. There were very few twos. And the, all these patients had a sensitive relapse. There are concerns about the toxicity. 80% um, of the patients had dose reductions in the experimental arm, despite the fact that they had a GCSF support and we have no quality of life uh, reports. And I think this does need uh, replication in Western population, given the fact that we knew about Ironotecan in uh, the Far East uh, has 
induce marked different results in different stages of small cell lung cancer in the past as compared to the Western population. Well, the excite, more exciting news, because this was all, let's say, good old cytotoxic stuff, the more exciting news is from the uh, novel targeted agents. Uh, two years ago, there was a, uh, I think, quite important paper uh, that described the genomic alterations in small cell lung cancer. And you can see the uh, ubiquitous uh, P53 mutation and RB1 mutation in uh, deletions in all patients. But there is a, a group of patients, I cannot point it out, but they have notch mutations or activation of the notch pathway in approximately 20% of patients. Notch, uh, is a, um, the notch pathway is quite difficult. It may, notch may either uh, act as a tumor suppressor or an oncogene, so it has two sites in uh, lung cancer. It's also activated in non-small cell lung cancer. And you can see at the, um, for me, it's the left-hand side, how it approximately works. Upon ligand binding, binding the um, notch is uh, part, in part cleaved from the uh, membrane and then cleaved again. So it is a second messenger. Sorry. Is this, is this one working? So it should work. No, no it doesn't. Okay. Work. So by comma secretas cleavage and then it uh, goes to the uh, nucleus where it uh, induces a transcriptional switch. Also on the left-hand side, you can see, or right-hand side, sorry, there's a non-canonical uh, signaling pathway, which may be either ligand-dependent or independent. Now, the news in, in small cell lung cancer pertains to the uh, notch ligands, and one of these ligands is delta-like one, uh, delta-like one, three, DLL3. And um, a couple of years ago, uh, it was found that uh, DLL3 is frequently overexpressed in small cell lung cancer. You can see uh, on the left-hand side the relative expression as measured by uh, RT-PCR. Uh, so there is a big difference between normal lung tissue and small cell lung cancer, be it in real life uh, specimen or PDXs. And if you uh, look at it with um, uh, immunohistochemistry, you can see the same uh, difference. So it seems that um, uh, DL3 is frequently overexpressed in small cell lung cancer, and indeed, in the study that I will show you, approximately two thirds of small cell lung cancer are high expressors of uh, DDL, DLL3. Now, there's a drug, a targeted agent. I find it very difficult to pronounce its name, but it's called Rova T, and you can see why is that. Um, so the idea here is there's an antibody that will bind to DLL3 and it has a spacer and just uh, uh, and connected to that spacer is a drug. It's called here the warhead, typically American expression, I would say. So what happens is that the upon binding on DLL3, you get internalization of the, uh, of the entire molecule and then intercellular, the active compound is cleaved off this complex. And in um, in vitro uh, experiments, you can see what is the uh, effect of the drug. In red uh, are those uh, animals treated with um, Rova-T as compared to the black lines, the black uh, uh, squares, which are control experiments. And likewise, you can see the difference between chemotherapy and this compound. Now, this compound is now in uh, phase two and three uh, testing. And uh, fairly recently, the phase one results have been, uh, been provided a <coughs> uh, by Charles Rudin, who was uh, the lead author of a paper in Lancet Oncology last month. So they treated 64 patient, 74 patients. Um, equally divided between females and males. I think that's a bit of importance because usually the proportion of females is much lower. Good performance status patients. And most patients were fairly heavily pretreated. 
you can see here that the um, tumor DLL3 expression was also measured in this uh, setting, and uh, more than 50% was about two-thirds of the patients. Those were called DLL3 highs. Toxicities associated with the, with the treatment are very, very low. The number of patients that had grade 3 toxicities exceeding 5 or 10 percent, usually the figure that we give in, uh, in these articles, is, was 0 percent. It has some unusual toxicities in that it has, uh, is associated with peripheral edema, pleural effusions, and to some extent uh, thrombocytopenia. However, in this phase one study, there was no MTD, maximal tolerated dose, when they looked for the uh, uh, cirrhosal effusions. And it's quite still what unclear what schedule of this agent uh, is best uh, tested in the phase three studies, I think. Now, here's the efficacy of the agent. When uh, we look at the DLL3 expression over 50%, you can see here that the confirmed objective response rate was almost 40%, and the disease control rate was six, uh, approximately 90%. There were some fairly long responders with this agent, so I, uh, I will show you in a minute. Here is the um, waterfall plot. There seems to be some uh, relationship between DL3 expression and uh, the uh, responses. You can see here in this um, swimmer plot uh, that there were some patients, and I'd like to remind you that these are heavily pretreated patients with small cell lung cancer that had a fairly long time on uh, treatment. So immunotherapy also got to small cell lung cancer. There is some information on single agent uh, PD-1 inhibitors and combinations with either chemotherapy or uh, NIVO-EP uh, combination. These are data that have been repeatedly been shown at uh, the last couple of years at, um, at World Lung and even at ESCO. This is Keynote 28, um, patients pretreated with uh, small cell lung cancer, good performance status. <coughs> At least some cells should be PDL1 positive, and uh, measurable lesions were treated with a higher dose of pembrolizumab. And uh, these were the uh, last updates uh, provided at World Lung uh, in December, where we have a response rate, objective response rate, of about 30%, which I think is in this setting uh, quite good, and the median duration of response, if you have a response, it tends to last very long. Overall survival was approximately 10 months, more or less what you could get with chemotherapy in the old days. Uh, so in these um, pretreated patients with pdo one positive small cell lung cancer, pembrolizumab demonstrated anti-tumor activity and the safety profile was consistent with other tumor types. Somewhat more information we got from a, a phase one, two study that tested either um, nivolumab alone or nivolumab uh, in combination with ipilimumab. Quite a complicated, um, let's say, allocation scheme where we, even if you read the article six times, you not, do not know how they got to it. A fairly typical population with uh, small cell uh, lung cancer that was recurrent. The majority of uh, patients had two to three lines of previous treatment, so again, quite heavily uh, pretreated. I would like to draw your attention to the pd one uh, expression level that was accessible in approximately two-thirds of the patients, and it seems that uh, pd one is frequently absent in uh, small cell lung cancer, more so than in uh, non-small cell lung cancer. Toxicities of treatment, of course, when you add ipilimumab to nivolumab, you will get more uh, toxicities, but they were not uh, different from what was known of the uh, melanoma literature. The response rates, they were approximately, let's say, 15, uh, in the order of 15% with uh, no uh, complete but all partial responses. And there were a number of patients who had progressive disease as their best response. So um, half of the patients in the nivolumab alone arm 
and approximately 40% of the, 45% of the patients in the combination arms. Sorry, there was also no uh, difference between <clears throat> no difference in uh, response rate between high PDO1 expressors and low PDO1 expressors. I think more importantly are the um, survival curves. You can see here that there is the suggestion of a tail in a small number of patients, but there definitely is probably a tail. Other medians are somewhat disappointing in my uh, view. Epilimumab, uh, I think, uh, will face a grim future in um, small cell lung cancer based on the previous trial in combination with nivolumab, but also uh, it has been tested in phase three setting uh, when combined with uh, standard chemotherapy in first-line settings in uh, extensive disease. Uh, this is a study reported by Martin Reck and colleagues in last year's um, journal of clinical oncology. And uh, I can show you the survival curves. Here you do not need any different metrics because they are really superimposable. So whether ipilimumab will ever make it in small cell lung cancer, I'm not sure. The PD-1, in, PD1 inhibitors, I think, are quite a different story. So uh, new treatment opportunities. Combination chemotherapy and second line, I think, des deserves to be reinvestigated. But the more encouraging results are obtained with um, Rovat in uh, in second line, at least for those who are high expressors of uh, DRL3. Single agent PD1 inhibitors, I think, will get a definite role in small cell uh, lung cancer, and there are unclear results with. Uh, uh, the ipilimumab studies. And having said that, I think that small cell lung cancer is back on the agenda again. Yeah, Thank you very much.